everyone. Welcome back to another fun fold lesson of actual English. My name is Jennifer Clyde. It's always wonderful to have you joining me. Now, today it's time for lesson 42. And as I did mention, last time we talked about marriage proposals. Now, what comes after a marriage proposal? Usually a wedding ceremony, right? So we'll talk about wedding ceremonies. Of course, wedding ceremonies are quite different depending on the country. Certain countries may have a certain wedding ceremony and other countries may do it very differently as well. We do have traditional wedding ceremonies in Korea as well, but of course we have the very general wedding ceremonies we can all talk about, right? Now, is there a certain dream wedding ceremony you have in mind? Would you like for yours to be a way, like a special way, at a certain location? Um, have you thought about who you want to be invited or who you want to invite to your wedding ceremony? As for me, I would like mine to be quite simple with not too many guests, just close friends and close people that I really interact with on a regular basis. And I would like it to be very peaceful and beautiful. I think all girls kind of have these big dreams and hopes when it comes to planning wedding ceremonies. Okay, enough talk about me. Let's begin with this topic. Once again, wedding ceremonies with today's actual talk. So Peter, yep. you're originally from England right. and your wife is originally from Korea. Mm -hmm. So where did you have your wedding? Did you have a destination wedding or Like in, in between England? the two countries? Yeah, maybe. That would have been a good compromise. That would have been. But no, we just had it in Korea. We had like the, uh, not, not a, I, I don't know how to describe it, you know, the wedding factories, wedding halls they have here. Okay, right. It wasn't in that kind of place. It was in a house wedding venue. Wow. So that means there's only one wedding at a time. Oh, rather okay. Rather than a whole mishmash of weddings going yeah. on. So, so I like that. Yeah, intimate. Yes. And you weren't kind of like rushed in and out. Not at I, all. I feel like that kind of happens sometimes in the weddings here exactly. in Korea. So I wanted it kind of a Western style in that sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, we tied the knot in this lovely little venue and she looked absolutely stunning. Bride oh. always does. Yeah. It's never the groom's day. It's n it never really <laughs> is. It's more about the bride. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. when is the groom's day? That's what I'm curious about. Well, I think <laughs> in a sense the wedding day is the groom's day because you're marrying the love of your life. There you go. And you're lucky for that. You're both <laughs> heroes, right? Exactly. But you're planning your wedding now, right, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, I am. So I'm trying to get a lot of ideas about what to do for the wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, my sister just got married. Oh, wow. So, yeah. In Korea? She got married in the States, so it was a very traditional uh, Christian wedding oh, wow. in a church with a reception afterwards, um, and it was so beautiful, and I was so emotional. I cried a lot throughout the wedding. You were tearing up. Yeah, <laughs> I was tearing. It was a very bittersweet moment because I was so happy she was getting married, but mm -hmm. I was sad that she was kind of leaving my family now, oh. in a sense, right? But she was absolutely stunning too. She was a total vision and the ceremony was so beautiful. What was the highlight? The reception? The yes, wedding? it was. The I think the reception was the highlight. It was a very rustic feel to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in a kind of like a observatory, um, lots of finger foods and cocktails. <sighs> Making me hungry. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. So yeah. I'm going to take a lot of ideas from her, the rustic feel with uh, the lightings. I look forward to your wedding. <laughs> I'll invite you. Welcome back, everyone. Did you enjoy today's actual talk? So once again, we are talking about wedding ceremonies. This may give you the opportunity to think about your wedding ceremony. Was it a year ago or was it just a couple months ago or years and years ago? Yeah, I'm sure it was a happy moment, a very special moment. Now, so Peter and Rachel were talking about their very special days. Now, what did Peter say? He said that he had his wedding ceremony in Korea, not in England, but in Korea. It was rather a small wedding ceremony, I think. And Rachel talked about the kind of wedding ceremony she would like to have. Let's take a look at their conversation then. Now, of course, uh, Rachel begins by asking Peter about how he got married, what his wedding was like. She says, so Peter, you're originally from England. So originally from a certain country. Peter, you're originally from England and your wife is originally from 
Korea. And then here comes the big question. So where did you have your wedding? Okay, did you have a destination wedding? What is a destination wedding? First of all, she asked, where did you have your wedding? Where was the wedding ceremony? And then she asks, was it a destination set ceremony or a destination wedding? It means destination, a location, a place you are destined to go or a place you are planning to arrive at. So if you say that a wedding was a destination wedding, it means that you may go to a particular place just to have that wedding. Some people opt to go to maybe a tropical island, a beach to have their wedding. Now that would be called a destination wedding. So what did Peter say? He said, well, like in between the two countries, he asks, do you mean in between the two countries? Two countries meaning England and Korea, right? He says, no, we just had it in Korea. We had our wedding in Korea. We had our wedding in Thailand. We had our wedding on Jeju Island or in Jeju is another way of saying it. Now he says it was a house wedding. Aha. Uh -huh. So just by taking a look at this, a house wedding, mm, instantly you may think, ah, so it was a very private small wedding, right? Venue here is another word for location, a destination, a place. So it was a house wedding venue location. So that means there's only one wedding at a time, at once, rather than a whole mishmash of weddings. So here we go with this sentence up to here. He says it was a house wedding venue. It was a house wedding type of wedding ceremony where there were only one wedding at a time, not several, just one wedding at a time, uh, rather than a whole mishmash of weddings. What is a mishmash? You've heard of mix match or mix and match. What is that? It means a combination of A and B or a combination of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How many does not matter. But a mishmash, often also written as M-I-S-H hyphen M-A-S-H. It means uh, just a combination of a whole lot of things, usually unrelated things. Some people say it is a mess of something, okay? A uh, whole confusion of something, okay? So basically, a mishmash is something that is not very tidy. It's just this and that all put together, usually with unrelated things. Okay, moving on. So Rachel says, ah, so very intimate. Intimate can mean very close. It could also mean very private and personal. So she says, ah, very intimate. And you weren't rushed in and out, she says. Rushed in and out. Now, if you're rushed into a certain place or if you are in a rush, it means that you are in a hurry, right? You are in a hurry because you don't have time or you're running short on time. But here, to be rushed in and out means to hurry very quickly go in and get right out, okay? He said, uh, she says, so I feel like that happens sometimes in the weddings here in Korea. I think she's talking about um, weddings that are usually held at those wedding halls, I think, because they do have busy schedules. So there's wedding after wedding after wedding. In those circumstances, yes, people may be rushed in and out because there is another wedding afterwards. Now, well, Peter says, we tied the knot. Tie the knot means to get married. Tie the knot. We tied the knot. We got married in this lovely little venue. Once again, I mentioned venue means a location, a place for a special gathering or even concerts as well. And she looked absolutely stunning. Now, she looked stunning. Hmm. Stunning is what? Stunning is another word for beautiful, striking, okay? So in other words, he's saying she looked so beautiful. She looked absolutely gorgeous, okay? The bride always does. The bride always looks absolutely stunning. It's never the groom's day. It's always the bride's day. I think so too. There's the bride and the male will be called 
the groom, okay? Groom. That's why often when we have、um, friends of the groom and friends of the bride, the friends, I think they're called tulori in Korean, the friends of the groom, they're called groomsmen, okay? Groomsmen. And the main groomsman is called, yes, the best man. And when it comes to the bride's friends, they're called bridesmaids. Okay, and the main person is called the maid of honor. So, just in case, that's some extra information. So, bride, and there's the groom. Anyhow, he says, you know, weddings are all about the bride. It's the bride's day, it's never the groom's day. Rachel says, it never really is. And then she says, it's more about the bride. Peter says, you're planning your wedding now, right? Yes, she is planning. ING in process, right? She's planning her wedding and she says, I am. So I am trying to get a lot of ideas about what to do for the wedding ceremony. So she's talking about, hmm, thinking and thinking about what she could possibly do for her wedding ceremony. And she gives an example My sister just got married. Just got married, meaning she recently. Got married, okay? She got married in the States. Okay, in the States, not in Korea. So it was a very traditional Christian wedding in a church, okay? In a church with the reception afterwards, okay? What is a reception? Hmm. A reception, especially if you are talking about a wedding reception, a reception at a wedding ceremony, it's like a formal party, a party you have with all of your guests that have attended the wedding. So she says her sister got married in America, in the States, and it was a very traditional Christian wedding. It was a religious wedding that was held in a church. Or at a church is also possible. And then she says, with the reception afterwards, meaning with the reception after the wedding ceremony. And it was so beautiful, she says. Okay? And I was so emotional. I cried a lot throughout the wedding. If you say that something was emotional, especially if you say that a person is emotional, it means that person tends to get very sentimental, okay?、Uh, you know, becomes very emotional, has all these emotions. So Rachel is saying, I was so emotional, meaning、ah, I had so many emotions, I felt sentimental, you know, and she cried a lot, okay? Not because she was sad, but because it was so beautiful and she was happy. Peter says,、uh, You were tearing up. Tear up means what? I think in Korean, the most, I guess the closest expression in Korean is to tear up. Dunmuri koida. That's right. Tear up. It means more and more tear or the amount of tears gather up and fill your eyes. Okay? So he asks, Were you tearing up? Were you tearing up? Were you crying? Were you about to cry? And Rachel says, it was a very bittersweet moment. What is a bittersweet? Bitter. Let's break up the word in two. Bitter is what? Let's talk about food, for instance. What is bitter? Hmm, there are certain fruits. If they're not ripe, they can be bitter. Tolpta, right? It can be suda or tolpta. And sweet is talkum. So if you say bittersweet, It is a feeling of sadness and happiness at the same time. So it's good and it's not so good in some sense, okay? It was a very bittersweet moment, and she explains why it was bittersweet. I was so happy, okay? She was getting married, but sad, she was leaving my family now, in a sense, okay? So, one more time bittersweet is a feeling of good and bad, right? Good and bad, positive and negative, happy and sad. So it was a very bittersweet moment for her. But she was absolutely stunning, she says once again.、Hmm. She was stunning too. Now, Peter asks, What was the highlight? The highlight of the wedding. And he asks, Was it the reception? The reception? Was the reception the highlight? Rachel says, Yes, it was. The reception was the highlight. There was a very rustic feel to it. Hmm. What is rustic? 
Instantly, if you see the word or hear the word rustic, you may think of countryside, rural. That's true. If you say rustic, most people do think of the countryside. But here we're talking about something that's quite unique or very picturesque, very beautiful in a natural way. The countryside is what? Very natural, right? So if something is very naturally beautiful, you can say that it is rustic. She says, there was a very rustic feel to it. Feel to it meaning the reception, they're talking about that. And she says, it was in an observatory. Lots of finger foods and cocktails. So let's imagine the reception, everyone. She said there's a rustic feel to it. Very countryside, so think of very natural. It's very comfortable, homey and cozy, even very picturesque. And it's full of delicious foods, such as finger foods. Now finger is what? Simple, that's right, our fingers. And food is food, the things we eat. Now if you call something a finger food or finger foods, we're talking about food Simple food like snacks you can grab with your fingers and simply eat it, okay? We don't need any eating utensils such as spoons and forks. So finger food or foods, if you're talking about all different kinds of finger food, basically we're talking about simple snacks, okay? So they had lots of finger foods and cocktails. Now that she's talking about how beautiful it was and then she talks about food, and cocktails, Peter says, what? Hmm, you're making me hungry. And brings us to an end to today's actual talk. All right then, everyone, let's take a listen to it one more time. So, Peter, yep. you're originally from England, right. and your wife is originally from Korea. Mm -hmm. So where did you have your wedding? Did you have a destination wedding? or Like in, in between England? the two countries? Yeah, maybe. That would have been a good compromise. That would have been. But no, we just had it in Korea. We had, like, the... Uh, not, not a, I, I don't know how to describe it, you know, the wedding factories, wedding halls they have here. Okay, right. It wasn't in that kind of place. It was in a house wedding venue. Wow. So that means there's only one wedding at a time. Oh, rather okay. Rather than a whole mishmash of weddings going yeah. on. So, so I like that. Yeah, very intimate. Yes. And you weren't kind of like rushed in and out. Not at I, all. I feel like that kind of happens sometimes in the weddings here exactly. in Korea. So I wanted it kind of a Western style in that sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, we tied the knot in this lovely little venue. And she looked absolutely stunning. Bride oh, always does. Yes. It's never the groom's day. It's n it never really <laughs> is. It's more about the bride. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. when is the groom's day? That's what I'm curious about. Well, I think <laughs> in a sense the wedding day is the groom's day because you're marrying the love of your life. There you go. And you're lucky for that. You're both <laughs> heroes, right? Exactly. But you're planning your wedding now, right, Rachel? Yeah, okay. I am. So I'm trying to get a lot of ideas about what to do for the wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, my sister just got married. Oh, wow. So, yeah. In Korea? She got married in the States, so it was a very traditional uh, Christian wedding oh. in a church with a reception afterwards, um, and it was so beautiful, and I was so emotional. I cried a lot throughout the wedding. You were tearing up. Yeah, <laughs> I was tearing It was a very bittersweet moment because I was so happy she was getting married, but mm -hmm. I was sad that she was kind of leaving my family now, oh. in a sense, right? But she was absolutely stunning too. She was a total vision and the ceremony was so beautiful. What was the highlight? The reception? The yes, wedding? it was. The rece I think the reception was a highlight. It was a very rustic feel to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in a kind of like a observatory, um, lots of finger foods and cocktails. <sighs> Making me hungry. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. So well, I'm going to take a lot of ideas from her, the rustic feel with uh, the lightings. I look forward to your wedding. <laughs> I'll invite you. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Now let's take a look at some words from today's actual talk, just so that you remember them. The first one is venue. Venue. I think you'll hear the word venue most often when people talk about concerts, for example. It's a place where a performance or a special gathering or a special event is being held, so you can often talk about a concert venue. But Peter mentioned something about a wedding venue that was rather a very private. It was a home wedding venue, right? It's a house wedding venue, sorry. So venue is pronounced venue, venue. The stress goes on the first syllable. And just to help you understand the definition, synonyms are designation, scene, or even location. Okay.
Venue means location, so keep that in mind. The next one is intimate. Intimate. I said very close and personal. It could also mean uh, very private and stunning. You can talk about something looking very stunning. It can mean that it's striking or somebody, especially a female. Perhaps the bride at a wedding, you can say she is absolutely stunning, meaning sensational, remarkable, beautiful, okay? So keep these vocab words in mind and let's move on to some patterns for today. Remember, it's not mix match, it's mishmash, mishmash, a mishmash of, okay? Here we go. I have a mishmash of great ideas for my wedding. Okay, so we're talking about all different kinds of something. This could be used in a negative way, as I mentioned. It could mean a mess, okay? Something that is not organized, a complete mess. But it can also mean a lot of something, usually unrelated things. So if you have all different ideas, you can say, I have a mishmash of great ideas for my wedding. Okay, let's check out another sentence. Her closet was a complete mishmash of things. Now this is kind of used in a negative way. The first example, it's positive. You got great ideas. But in the second example, you're talking about a closet full of so many different things. Her closet was a complete mishmash of things. Socks soccer balls, uh, you name it, just everything. It was a mess. Her closet was a mess. Let's move on. Rush in and out. Rush in and out, okay? A sample sentence says, my brother rushed in and out to grab a jacket. My brother rushed in and out to grab a jacket. Now, grab itself means to do something very quickly, okay? To grab something quickly. So, for example, if somebody, let's say your brother, uh, left home and then he ran back home to grab a jacket and he left. In that case, you can say, my brother rushed in and out to grab a jacket. Here is another sentence. We rushed in and out of the department store to get gifts. To buy gifts. So if you ran into a department store because you did not have time, you ran in, bought a few things, bought a few gifts and then left right away, you can say we rushed in and out of the department store to get gifts. You can run in and out of a certain place. It means to go in and leave very quickly. Okay, let's try out one more pattern. There was a certain feel to the so-and-so. Rachel said there was a rustic feel to it when she was talking about the reception, right? Here we go. Let's say there was a romantic feel to the ceremony. Hmm, a romantic feel. So if the environment or the atmosphere was very, very romantic, you can say there was a romantic feel to the ceremony. Simply you're saying the ceremony was very romantic. Okay, try to make it a bit fancier, okay? There was a romantic feel to the ceremony. Here is another one. There was a relaxed feel to the atmosphere. This means when you walked in, the atmosphere was very relaxing. You can say there was a relaxed feel to the atmosphere. Let's check out one more. There was a very Korean feel to it. Hmm. It was very Korean, in other words. So, if you want to say something is very Korean, the style is very Korean, you can say there is or there was a very Korean feel to it. Mm. So those are our patterns for today and our vocab, everyone. Make them yours by going over them. So recently, my oldest brother uh, got married, and so I got to attend his wedding two months ago. Um, it was probably one of the nicest weddings I've seen. I could be biased because it's my brother, but also just because most weddings I've seen were at churches or at certain wedding halls. And so, you know, those are really nice too, but my brother's was very small, small gathering, and it was outdoors at this really nice garden. At actually, him and his wife's um, college. 
And so, yeah, it was very small and quaint, uh, very simple. I think I really like simple things. Just like in my wedding proposal, I like simple things. And so this wedding was just uh, outdoors. Seating was maybe like 150. And we just had our pastor, a close pastor, preside it. Uh, yeah, and then it was, the color scheme was very clean. It was white. There was flowers, a lot of flowers. So, um, yeah, that's what I would want in, I guess, my wedding as well. So. All right, that was today's actual story. Let's get straight to it. There were some great expressions used in Sarah's actual story about her idea of weddings. Here we go. She said, recently, my oldest brother got married. Okay, he just got married. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. It was probably one of the nicest weddings I've seen. Now, pay attention to this. If you're talking about one of the many things, you should say it was one of the nicest so-and-so. Always add an S there. It's very important that you do. So once again, it was one of the nicest weddings I have seen, I have been to, for example. And let's take a look at one more. Color scheme was white and there were a lot of flowers. Pay attention to this word. Okay, it is not sheen, sheen, no, it is S-C-H-E-M-E, -E, and it's pronounced scheme, scheme. So the color scheme was white. The color scheme was pink. If it's mostly pink, you would say the color scheme was pink. If mostly it was all black, you can say the color scheme was black. But at this wedding, the color scheme was white and there were a lot of flowers. There were lots of flower decorations. Perhaps white flowers, right? Okay, that is a wrap for today's actual story. So recently, my oldest brother uh, got married and so I got to attend his wedding two months ago. Um, it was probably one of the nicest weddings I've seen. I could be biased because it's my brother, but also just because most weddings I've seen were at churches or at certain wedding halls and so you know those are really nice too but my brother's was very small small gathering and it was outdoors at this really nice garden at actually him and his wife's um, college and so yeah it was very small and quaint uh, very simple I think I really like simple things just like in my wedding proposal I like simple things and so this wedding was just uh, outdoors seating was maybe like 150 and we just had our pastor, a close pastor, preside it. Uh, yeah, and then it was, the color scheme was very clean. It was white, there was flowers, a lot of flowers. So um, yeah, that's what I would want in, I guess, my wedding as well. So. You know, I hope you got a lot of ideas as to what you can talk about in the future when it comes to talking about wedding ceremonies. Not only can you talk about the kind of ceremony it was, who came to the wedding, you can now talk about what color it was, what kind of feel it had. You can see it had a very so-and-so feel to it. The color scheme was pink. The color scheme was blue. Okay, so I hope you make those patterns, those vocab and expressions yours by going over them on your own as well. And I guess I'm going to have to say goodbye. Next time, I'll join you with this one. Guess what our next topic is? We talked about uh, marriage proposals, and then we had the wedding ceremony. What happens after a wedding ceremony? The newlyweds go on their honeymoon, right? So our next topic is honeymoons. Let's talk about that next time. In the meantime, come to our homepage, find your way over to www.ebse.co.kr and I guess I'm gonna have to say that is a wrap for today. Have a great day, I'll catch you again next time. Bye everyone.